Okay, uh, good morning, Dr. Jensen. Many thanks for meeting with us. Could you tell us about one or two of the more important things you've learned as an anthropologist uh, that would interest psychiatrist? Sure, so I, I've been talking with you about how important social conditions are to mental health outcomes uh, and understanding the context that people are operating mm -hmm. in, the meanings that they attach to um, family, to treatment itself, a medication, and what they have to navigate even to seek mental health care. So all of those things are so vitally important for clinical psychiatrists right. to know and incorporate in their care. Okay. Given that social factors really account for, and social connection, what I was just describing to you accounts uh, for probably the majority of variants in mental health outcomes. Okay. So that's definitely an area that we have to attend to much more and that would make our work so much more productive and satisfying as psychiatrists. Many of the frustrations that we run across in our practice of having patients not cooperate with treatment, not follow through with treatment or our recommendations, doing things that se are seemingly self-defeating mm -hmm. um, would be best addressed by understanding where they're coming from, what they're navigating, what meaning they're attaching to things, what their social circumstances are, how they can be improved. But here's, um, here's a take on it that I'm really beginning to look at closely uh, with my colleagues in a, in a special project that we started this year. That is, even though we're in an era of the brain in psychiatry and very focused on the hope, the inspiration that understanding biological processes can give us molecular level interventions that will have mm -hmm. a big impact on mm -hmm. outcomes. Um, this is actually an opportunity for us to be leaders and forerunners in an emerging area of biological research in the life sciences, which is the interaction of the social environment with biology. So we know that in genetics, one of the most exciting growth areas of genetics research is actually epigenetics, understanding how uh, traits can be inherited and transmitted that are not necessarily encoded in the genome, but are actually at the level of environmental regulation of the genome. So in our, in our own hospital at NYU, there's a researcher, Dolores Malspina, who's well known for studying the intergenerational transmission of, for example, exposure to wartime trauma, that the influence of that on risk for schizophrenia. Um, so understanding how social environment and biology interact, that's, that's where we really should be going. And as psychiatrists, we're in the ultimate position to be leaders in that area. Because we've so long been looking, you know, dating back to Freud and well before, at how histories, family histories, individual traumas, et cetera, are um, determining mental health outcomes on the one hand, but also have inherited components. We're really looking at how the, those social circumstances are inherited. So we have this long past of looking at things in that kind of nuanced and complicated and interactional way. Mm -hmm. And I think we as psychiatrists can be the leaders in that. So epigenetics, neuroplasticity, for example, the research in neuroscience that is um, refuting the idea that we are hardwired neurologically from birth and looking at how well into adulthood and even later adulthood uh, our neurons are being shaped and modified based on our experiences, our social environment. So I think we as psychiatrists are really in a very exciting position to push both social science research and biological life science research into this area of um, integrative and interactional models that are much more nuanced, much more sophisticated, um, and really demonstrate how important a, a holistic view of our patients and clinical problems are or is, uh, that it's so important to address multiple levels of causation when we're trying to address mental health illness, the family environment, the um, the community environment, the political environment, the neurological environment and molecular environment of the person. So I think we as psychiatrists should feel good that we're in this wonderful position to bring that kind of research into the future. Say that was outstanding. I thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.